this is dr abilash chandra working as an additional professor in the department of nephrology at ramana loya institute of medical sciences which is a government owned tertiary care center in lucknow i've been working as a nephrologist over here in for the last 9 years so i have a uh, 9 years experience in this field and today i'd like to bring into your attention uh, the importance of kidney disease uh, or the importance of kidneys as such in our body the diseases associated with kidneys and what are the symptoms associated with kidney dysfunction and the importance of high blood pressure in terms of chronic kidney disease so first uh, the importance of kidneys in our body uh, kidneys play a vital role in the maintenance of our body function primarily it helps to excrete extra amount of fluid from our body along with extra toxins in our body it also helps to in the production of red blood cells in our body it helps in the production of vitamin d which is important for our uh, skeletal growth and muscular growth it helps in controlling blood pressures through various hormones and uh, after going through the various kidney functions in our body we need to see what are the symptoms associated with kidney dysfunction so patients with kidney disease are likely to feel tired or lethargy they have a reversal of uh, sleep cycle say they are likely to experience sleepiness during the day hours and lack of sleep during the night hours this is primarily due to the accumulation of uremic toxins in our body which are not getting excreted through the kidneys they are likely to feel difficulty in concentrating they are also likely to urinate more in the night hours because they have difficulty in concentrating the urine during the night hours this is primarily due to some this hormonal dysfunction as well as a structural dysfunction in the kidneys they are likely to witness sometimes blood in the urine which can be visible through the naked eye at times or it can be visible through a microscope they are also likely to see uh, some frothiness in the urine if they are passing protein in the urine they can be puffiness around the eyes ankles or elsewhere in the body which is again due to accumulation of excess fluid which is not getting excreted through the kidneys they are likely to have a decrease in their appetite as well as they are also likely to feel nausea and at times they may vomit too this is these symptoms are primarily due to the accumulation of uremic toxins at times they may experience muscle cramps which, which are because of uh, various electrolyte disturbance happening in the body because of kidney dysfunction primarily the calcium levels may go down and phosphorus levels are likely to go up because the kidneys are not able to excrete phosphorus in the through the kidneys so after, after having gone through the symptomatology now what are the uh, reasons behind kidney dysfunction now across the world we have seen that diabetes has been associated as the most common cause of kidney dysfunction and this is closely followed by hypertension now thereafter there are a number of causes like some genetic causes which can lead to formation of cyst which are fluid filled spaces in the kidneys which over a period of time can cause kidney dysfunction there are various autoimmune diseases in which the immune system our immune our own immune system attacks our own cells and organs which includes the kidneys as well they can be various heavy metal poisonings sometimes we tend to consume various uh, toxic agents in the form of drugs some painkillers without the prescription of a doctor so prolonged use of these drugs can cause kidney dysfunction sometimes long term stone diseases large stones formed in the kidneys can over a period of time cause kidney dysfunction sometimes there is an obstruction in the passage of urine through the urinary tract which can cause kidney dysfunction there can be vascular causes the vessels which supply blood to the kidneys can get narrowed which can lead to kidney dysfunction repeated urinary tract infections can also at times lead to kidney dysfunction 
So these are the various causes of kidney dysfunction. Now I'd like to, to focus to the second most important cause of kidney dysfunction, which is hypertension. Now, why is hypertension important? As you know, the blood pressure, which is uh, uh, ex exerted on the walls of the arteries is called, uh, when the, the blood pressure exerted on the walls of the arteries exceeds the necessary level, it is labeled as hypertension. Usually when the blood pressure rises beyond 130 by 80 millimeter of mercury, it is called as hypertension. We have tiny vessels running all across the kidneys, which can be damaged if the blood pressure remains raised beyond this, uh, beyond this level for a long period of time. Now, why is hypertension so important? If you, you were to come across five patients of hypertension, at least one of them is likely to have chronic kidney disease as well. So this highlights the importance of identifying hypertension because it is very closely associated with chronic kidney disease. Now we need to focus how to prevent hypertension. It can be prevented by various very simple measures like improving our lifestyle. If we are overweight or obese and BMI of more than 25, any reduction in uh, body weight is likely to help us in improving our blood pressures. We can avoid, we should avoid rather trans fat, saturated fats, sugar, and we also need to restrict salt in our dietary intake to less than five grams a day. We are supposed to maximize use of vegetables and fresh fruits in our diet. Including of inclusion of whole grains in our diet is also likely to help in we should avoid smoking as far as possible. Restricting the amount of alcohol intake is also going to help in controlling our blood pressure. Avoiding stress, focusing on at least moderate degree of physical activity for two at around 150 minutes a week is also going to go a long way in controlling our blood pressure. Sometimes by even by taking all these measures, blood pressure remains uncontrolled. So what do we do then? We consult a physician, who is likely to prescribe some antihypertensive drugs. Now we should comply to those drugs and still monitor our blood pressure regularly. It has been seen that non-compliance in patients who have uncontrolled blood pressure is as high as 40 to 50%. So compliance to drugs is of paramount importance. And the, once you have developed hypertension, you also need to check whether you have renal dysfunction as well. So how do we do? We check our urea and creatinine levels in our blood. And we also simultaneously see, simultaneously see for urine examination, which can let us know if there is some kidney damage as well. And this will help in tackling any kidney disease at an early stage. That's it from my side. Thank you.